Hello, everybody. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Everybody. I am Peachy117, and welcome to I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. It was actually, uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh. Released? Uh, it's. Published, released, whatever. Uh, it by actually KFC. It's an actual KFC game about dating Colonel Sanders. <laughs> and for the for the frickin' occasion, I went and bought me some KFC. So I'm gonna eat me some chicken. Um, KFC, sponsor me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me finish this. So anyway, anyway. Let's get right into this dating simulator. Before we get started, tell us your name. Yeah. Oh, that's chicken and biscuits. I like chicken and biscuits. Is this like the loading screen? I don't know. I'm guessing. Ah, there we go. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. That I, <laughs> I have a, I have a freaking poster of a chicken over there. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. <laughs> or you could wake up now. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. <laughs> God. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School. Academy for Learning? <laughs> University of Cooking School. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You take this seriously, you allow yourself a dream, a daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Ah, eh, whatever, I'll take it easy. It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. God, that noise. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Boom, frickin' biscuit. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever. Miriam? Miriam? Aw. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Miles. M Miles! Because it's all caps. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the... It's just that. This morning, I made breakfast for myself. But, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> oh, that, that crying noise. Why are the noises so loud? But with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semester. <laughs> three-day-only semesters. That's a short semester. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl. Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss <laughs> that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh, God. Should you pep talk her or change this up to give her some relief? Pep talk. Mm. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and our, and our tarot cards read? Had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know, she looks spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy-looking tower, and the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own, 
And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, you'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. They're killer. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom and grave measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's... A... Ash... Ashley. Ashley. <laughs> I'll just say Ashley. Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but feel be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. <laughs> what? You leave Miles' shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Thanks, Miriam. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. <laughs> you know for a fact that it is actually Ashley, but she had to add an extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone else. Ah, I knew it was Ashley. If anyone here knows what's perfect shins looks like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. What? Has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you could see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Ahem, <laughs> Van Van? You rang rang? I got, oh god, I got that verse, I got that voice perfectly on that guy. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but su substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time there's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, losers. Oh god! As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to Oh fuck! Is that a fart noise? <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> I think it's broken. You reach for it and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Although his, also his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi Pop. I'm Miles. So... Are you going to make me hold the door, this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone closed the window. And then, he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of his new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Sorry. Sorry, I meant, I meant Professor Dog. Before he could finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. 
Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. <sighs> and this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> Maybe we should... Oh, sorry, it's Van Van. Maybe we should open the window back before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Miles sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that shimmer. <laughs> you turn to Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Oh, wait, Colonel Sanders' voice. Um, how am I supposed to do this? <clears throat> Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? I'll take it. Gotta wipe all that sweat off. You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is trans... trans... transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sparks and compete in the... Broom? Br broom. Brume? Brume. I'm, I'm going to say Brume. In the Brume cooking arena! Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Student? <laughs> Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone has a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish! Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! Sorry if that was loud. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town in his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referring, re re ugh, referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the, in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. <sniffs> hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' rep Sprinkles's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with the chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorites! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealous jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Why would I be, why would I be carrying dog treats? Like, what? <clears throat> Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Miles, there's still a seat here. 
It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me if you're interested. Two good options, but which will you choose? Sit by best friend, sit by Colonel Sanders. Hmm, I'm gonna sit by the Colonel. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Pop quiz? <laughs> what the hell? Yay, a quiz about me! This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point, to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <laughs> what? What is what is washing your hands before cooking have to do with two trains traveling to two different freaking places? You know what? You know what? It's extremely important. Looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to feather? That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork, a meat tenderizer, a comically oversized fork. We did say spork, so I'll, I'll say a spork because, I mean, if you think about it, it is quite fish efficient. It's a spoon and a fork put together. I mean, you could, you could use stuff that you would use like a spoon for, like soup or something, while at the same time being able to use it for other things that a fork would be used for. So a spork. <laughs> That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Uh, a pancake that looks like a silly face. Camel meat. What? Why is that an option? Anything, as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. I'm gonna say that one. That's right. It sprinkles a good boy. <laughs> he is the best boy. He's a talking dog that teaches a culinary so He's the best boy. There we go. Your total score is... Five out of five. Wow. Be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching your tally, your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, Miles. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. <laughs> May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts the room, through the room, and tickles the end of your nose. Oh, my nose! Your mouth waters. <laughs> Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. The kind of smell he smelled. Indeed, that smell, <laughs> that kind of smelly smell, the smell that smells smelly. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've ever heard, you've, you've, God, I can't talk. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its containers glimmer in the light. Oh, I didn't get a bucket. I got, I got this, I got this box. So, yeah. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel, Santa, Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. 
your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I will say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude, nah! I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of these ingredients is, a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear Diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame, and with cooking skills like this, she wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any. I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment, trying to identify it every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it, it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. I feel like I swim towards the light, I'll die or something. Um, I'll savor the moment. I like food. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if, uh, I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? This is... Uh, this, 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 this is... Uh, num, 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 num. I done okay the semester is only getting started we've got two more whole days to get to know each other he's clearly not going to give up easily give it up easily but it doesn't hurt to be persistent persistent is my mental name you know what they say about secrets colonel shouldn't learning be fun oh you've got moxie i'll give you that colonel sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in you can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blank. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Blank? Wow, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about my s how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow. Wow him with a big idea. To add to an additional ingredient to really spice things up. 
Be modest but thoughtful. Um, that last one, I guess. I don't want to mess up his uh, recipe, and I have no idea what neg means. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Miles. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lessons will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. That's, uh, wait. There's six, there's six stoves. Six ovens, stoves, whatever. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with this year, with your signature adorable tidy food creations. Oh, what was the voice I used for him? Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lessons, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, Miles. I'll prepare our station. Without you as your partner, Miriam is... Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep boop. <laughs> Oh my, two potential potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Hmm. Well, Clank appears to be some kind of cooking machine, and Pops appears to be some weird kid who constantly has a juice box in his hand. So, Clank... Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear that Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this point, at this juncture. Well, point, juncture, whatever. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Bzzz. Tissue? I hardly know you. Ha ha ha! I'll get it. Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is in an island. No chef is an island? No chef is an island. Takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea? Which dish you success to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Say tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't need to cook it. My grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Um... Sure, I'll use my grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy because he said something about his grandmother. Maybe using something from my grandmother will do the same. Oh, hold on. Freaking what the heck? You get out of here. Sorry, something came up on my PC. Okay. I've always been something of a down home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. Oh, wait. Sorry, I forgot the emphasis there. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off of my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? 
Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Miles' dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of your own classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh. What is this music? What is this music? Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van, are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Miles was struggling, so we offered to give him give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say Colonel Sanders. Maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. But maybe one day you might be able to get up on to my level. Ha! Huh, doubt it. Don't be rude, Fan Fan. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley's really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders or Miriam. Uh, well, I, I've, I've kind of been leaving Miriam out, so my forever bestie who always has my back. You turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust? vis a vis my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Miles is my partner for today's activity. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into perfectly creamy mashed texture. With plenty of butter and cream for flavor, it's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He holds a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds the spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand there holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil under the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you with the Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious! Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Miles. We do not waste food in the broomy cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better... You both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. What is that? Is that like, it's an axe. It's a freaking axe. Mashed potatoes and gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my special braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce placed on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. This end, that ends now. It is I who will have first bite and you will all look on me as envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature disc right off the plate. Plate. It's actually an ass. No! Don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned into the process. The results could be toxic! Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> what the 
the fuck? What the sh- What the shit? Everyone, everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slipped into Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then it is and almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bells ring. Disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious, da obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kind. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sander ap approaches you. I'm sorry I had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. Ghost of student. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building is taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark, and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. It's still crazy. It freaking killed him. He just turns into a sheet ghost, and he's just freaking dead. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know... They're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. God, is that a tear? Colonel Sanders, are you crying? Now might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders, Yes, Miles. There's something I need to tell you. Mm. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream, and that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up! I'm the only one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him, we're talking about me. Me, me, me! I'm the hero! Spork monster. <laughs> the spork monster is here to fight a hero. <laughs> I, uh, I think I love the first door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is... Is he's rhyming on... Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can dis discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Um... Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love! Cook with love does one damage. It just... It just got real! That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Defend! You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. Cook with love. <laughs> Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utilitensile. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Okay, just defend then. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Oh, what's this? Buff up. 
No one can control this much buffness. You start to feel bloated and quite, frankly, a little gassy. You better attack sooner. You're likely to explode. You just had to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie power pinch. Pot pie power pinch does ten damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You manage to tamp, tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Big on, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells, with the golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library cart tucked inside. The last name to have signed it is... Borco? The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you to get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Ah, uh, sleepy noises. Oh my god, they're already <laughs> chicken. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then, and then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clegg. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds... Like I'm doing, it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. She knows, she knows he's a machine, right? We've got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in, high, in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a, at a school he didn't even go to. It was also the convertible that he... It was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it's uh, it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, you're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're not alone before continuing. So, this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me about all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me how he 
and what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please... <coughs> oh, oh, God, sorry. <coughs> it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret, or should you share it with your bestie? Mm, I don't know. I mean, she is my best friend, and, you know, besties need to stick together. But at the same time, I'm trying to get with Colonel Sanders. I should probably protect this recipe. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing. And you figured that you've satisfied her curiosity. And she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm what she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossoms petals. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving in school. On a horse? Run to him! You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and the Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely, he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion, and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. <laughs> However, your sudden move had surprised the horse, and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. And the darkness, you see a vision. <laughs> Ooh, Miles, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget the world, if you forget, the world could end, so you know it's, it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you could save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. Oh, jeez. You wake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with the satchel of secret spices. Or is it that, that his natural seasoned musk? Lean <laughs> in for a kiss. Oh man, that would be bad. That'd be bad. Hmm. I don't think I don't think um I don't think I'm ready for that yet. He'll probably be all like, listen, uh, rejection. So, I'll compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse to school. <laughs> and maybe you shouldn't be running to up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure. Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. I don't think I said that right. By the way, they're hiding. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. You immediately trust the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary school has to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. 
Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it, if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes... Pan panache. Panache. Pan panache? Is that, is that what that is? I don't know. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding, and you ins instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been just studying. They haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Why? We're playing. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Buzz, <gasps> womp. <gasps> who do you think you're? Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. We're Psst. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <sighs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me. I'm, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. <clears throat> or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Sorry, I couldn't get the right voice there. I had to, like, kind of cycle through them. So many voices. Maybe I could help you with their business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. The students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs around around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. What the heck? <laughs> down, Moe, down! Off to hoppin'! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I... Uh, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkle regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Miles, naturally this appears to you to, you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water, a shimming and pepper, a dog biscuit. A dog biscuit? Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles, an example of his own culinary talents, perhaps. You reach out for it when... <laughs> Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks at you on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. I never even got to taste it. Is this the end? You fade into darkness, but something is there. The spork monster? Borko, what are you doing here? It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. 
You watch as your apron magically <laughs> repairs itself. You won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend, wherever you are. Which item do you want to sample? A shimmering pepper, I guess. A brightly colored pepper, pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper is triggered in an immense spice hallucination. Feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend, ooh. This guy again? I'm here to give you an important message, ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> oh, sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy! <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man! You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competition cook-off. <laughs> oh, it's Ashley who said that. Via timed competitive competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Step up and tell them, you're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Miles. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting coat. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turned on the timer. Just then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. <gasps> I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you had made best potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him here again. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to run it randomly. Uh, that's wrong. Ah, caught. Ah, it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know what Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say? Uh, eleven. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet. At least you're he headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers you the most flavor? Mm. Gratitude? That's right. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are written for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better be picking up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget when you, where you came from. Every day you meditate on his device and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? Uh... Oh! What? You try to shut off the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Uh... Silence? That's right. When they taste your cooking, they will be so taken that it will, they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Miles! He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome. Except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. No, all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoons full of gravy would it take to fill a dick with Oh, what? What? Get your mind back into the competition. You are stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. 
Which do you take? What a hunk! I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focusing on the challenge? You're falling behind! Sorry, I forgot the question. Uh, uh, what does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? <laughs> woof, woof! You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing personal touch. Where You might not have any hands, but Miles does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your air was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Miles, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. <laughs> it's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no, there's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. <sighs> what you often find is that, is that the easy way could turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Sure, that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it'd be fa it, would, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Miles' injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of, of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Miles to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Jelly. Colonel Sanders can't, ugh, seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> As he places a soft-covered finger in, into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce strikes, sticks to his mustache. Put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off of his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Game over. Game over! Do I have to start over? What? Do I have to start over? Do I have to start over? Oh, do I have to do all that again? Ah, oh, fit competition. Okay, let's let's see if I can actually do this this time. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in if I have to wipe the tables with fools before I set my lunch down, then so be it. Okay. I'm not the fool. Okay. Now, alright, let's see. Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. I stand corrected. Okay, let's see. Let's do this. Okay. Uh. 212 degrees is 100 degrees Celsius, that's why I'm telling that. Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing be offer be motivating you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know how Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he use? 11. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensified. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. Let's see the mind offers you, uh, it was gratitude. 
classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley's simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. Forget. Okay, a small town where big beans are born. That's right. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Arrrr! You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Silence. Okay, you'll be so taken back. I believe in you, Miles. <laughs> he's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Uh, what were you thinking? Getting one deck into competition. Grr. Ah, oh, man. Uh, is, this, is there no way to actually, like, pass this? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess there is no way to, yeah, there's no way to, you know, do that. I got everything right, too. Ah, all right, well... All right, yeah, yeah, freaking um Mhm. Mm hmm. <gasps> Internalize the rage you feel. <laughs> they burst into flames. My eyes burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off of your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding, because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that one in with the mixer and that small fire. We, can, we should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths, and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an ad obstetrician. Really? I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. The mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight, and I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived, for a while anyhow. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-cut beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money could deter me from getting, giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My, dream is, my new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man is a, in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! <laughs> Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the spork monster. Borko? It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but uh... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Oh, thanks, Porco. I'm glad that there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. 
I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook? Precisely. I procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you. Respect it. You're a powerful chef, and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat through, through them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. <clears throat> It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Miles, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own, lady? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret, just for you? Well, he revealed something of his to me, so I'm going to reveal it to him. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you could talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in headfirst. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish, you've been, a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you, mold on, do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I could admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer it to him to... You can offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items you could look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Oh, okay, what's this? This must, must, must be where he kept, keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn to the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside you find a single note. Hmm. Tap on the item to discover more about the Colonel. Send that, like, can chicken be prepared something way? An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure this must be Colonel Sanders himself. Yes, because he's just a baby with a goatee. That or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? Tap on an item, okay. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices? Ooh, a door. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in a scent. They say the home is where your heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casually until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. Ah, crap, the jacket. You forget to take it off. 
You fess up and tell the truth. Uh, you gotta be honest with Colonel Sanders. If I'm trying to date Colonel Sanders, I gotta be honest with him. I can't just be all like, I I'm cold. I just decided to get into your closet because I was cold. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. You smiles? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! <laughs> there they all are. <laughs> Chicken again. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a, gor a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. I clicked. My bad. It was, it was like a drumstick and something else. I'll have to look at it later. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out of the door and go home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it's... <laughs> turns out you're fine, I could finally get you up to speed on the Saga of Miriam. Sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he's asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you better keep your dials down to... What? Of course, I told him, you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. <laughs> skydiving. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's just a typical first date to go on without taking it with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Off Miriam offers you to support you no matter what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you could do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he, f he himself finds... might not grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one right up when. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. He <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person here at this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides at school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ooh. You've got some nerve, Miles, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixture accident makes you wits in pain. Doesn't look like you're going on a uh, go. You can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. 
Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are co close to a boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something might be, something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day at school? Miles, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Would you get out of here? <laughs> Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you are passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Miles. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Miles. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to seek Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad, quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's the book? It looks That looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimora. But I don't know really... I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimora? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I could think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of an extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell right here that it says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scope out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Don't do it! We have had so much progress with Colonel Sanders. We might be a thing. I told him that I loved him. Don't do it, me! Don't do it! You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the classroom. Room. Waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want all of you to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Wait to see what happens. There we go. Sprinkle stops in his track. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. <laughs> Terrence! I told you to never come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drew a flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Miles, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see? But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of this room. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane, strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language with mechanical noises. Whirr. But no, you had to show off your cool kid friends Jeff and Joan, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair, we still speak the sand. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep. Whirr. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain, or off a cliff for all I care. 
sad beep. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps of his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh, what the hell? Bzz, bzz. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. <laughs> Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay? Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend that they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam! Trademarked. I'll, I'll still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. Only droplets? How could he embarrass me in front of the class like that? In front of everyone? Oh, I, I totally added that in there. My bad. Okay. Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. So you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is just is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up. Imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feelings all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion right off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sorta. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else wants we want to bring along. If it's not Popper Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest. Anyhow, Marion gives you a big hub and wipes the tear from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. 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 I like soup. Estes soup. And I bet that professor dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea on how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants of a Van Van, the supposed Man Man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Miles' famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Miles, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head cost you a cook-off. You said that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick with when the oven timer goes off behind you. Well, <laughs> there's no ignoring it. Then you'll burn the pie. I'll burn it, and I can't do that. Especially if I'm going to focus on my cooking. Can't do it. Can't do it. Fess up. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My smell. My, my smell can nose. Yes. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's impressive. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was a pot pie from just the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all-butter crust. And my nose is telling me it's something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping help of... TLC? But it probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. 
It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I uh, could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that push you over the edge to victory. You know, I haven't been eating this at all. I just have some mac and cheese here, so that's good. Good. KFC mac and cheese is the way to go to win this thing. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go, go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10, with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. He's able to have levitating chicken? Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, bastard, blaster! Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. <gasps> Let's rock and roll! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality <laughs> spatula! <laughs> Even Clint gets into it. Five dial point. Wait, five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let, we mustn't let it happen, or the Unplanned Uprising will take us all! Self destruct. Van Ren quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out to the back of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? <sighs> no, I can't. If I cast a spell, I'll be as bad as her. Plus, I mean, did you see Borko? He used to be a dog, and now he's a spork monster. And that was from just a spell in the book. What if it, like, freaking messes up or something? And I'm gonna do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. <laughs> I believe in you, Miles. Miriam notices, too. And I've always believed in you, Miles, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever! You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient! However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get... I have Newt from! The boiling pot <laughs> explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster! Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, has noticed that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing me some fresh noodles and a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel spork monster winding up to tell you a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should uh, watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in my school when I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up. You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. 
Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. What kind of freaking give up a drop out of culinary? No, I summon extra power deep down within me. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange. This culinary energy flows through your body. Oh my god, I'm going Super Saiyan. <laughs> my heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Miles, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspir <laughs> inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing for their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that this... You know that with this power, you could do anything. Except turn back time, which should be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven, you can't be served. But don't worry, dear Miles. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and my, my, I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surprise their surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we could form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now present to you must now prepare to present your dishes. God, I'm trying to speak too fast, and I'm messing up. Sorry. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hee hee hee! I'm flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop, hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? Hmm? 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 Pop! <laughs> Sorry, I thought Pop was talking, talking for a second. Then I noticed my name, and I was like, did Van Van have something to do with this? Let me guess. When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. <laughs> it looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs, may I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSLAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or uh, other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. <laughs> but after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. Oh my god, that is adorable. Look how freaking tiny that is. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny... Naruto Maki, I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> chef is his father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't even floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. 
Miriam is overjoyed. He, she gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Miles, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and an axe hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, yeah, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is a kind of is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close enough close enough on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine! Grrr. Finally, Spinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this! It keeps poking my tongue! Disqualified! A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought the serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <gasps> Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This isn't the last you've ever heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps me calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight and a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue mer mer and connected by sugar glass. I gotta admit, it actually looks really cool. Like, that's a really neat like way to present food. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it anyway. It's very fragile and meant to be on display. It meant to be a display piece? Don't eat the food. At a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Miles? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I would go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high on cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've ever you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and for perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Cinders have made a new menu item. The menu item is so impressive that even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They were supposed to be there were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment. To get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to, in order to serve as the site of the school graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! 
You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who, th who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Vin and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting their wrongs, righting the wrongs that they did while they were the villains. Ah, they changed their clothes. Man, he, man, Van Van really likes to show off his muscles there. He has like this really short freaking man. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together... It's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I'd prefer that everybody refer to Matt. I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he's had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing of the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. Music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? <laughs> I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand. Kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end... There's a question mark. Is is it the end? I don't freaking know. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on the delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Your smiles? I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy, carried out by two cunning chefs, or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do -si do <laughs> Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you. You feel a surge of energy jump off the tip of your fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef, so dedicated to the craft of fine cookery, so tender yet refined, so milky smooth, fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight they reach for you. And though our feet may tire of dancing, I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen, as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? You gasp. Could it be? Is he really saying? Me and you? Together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No, even then my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. The end. Oh, I guess that's it. Oh, can... Oh, 
Oh, okay, space. There we go. All right, that was literally the entirety of I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. That was a great game. Like, I haven't really pay, played dating simulators, but I mean, I ha I've watched a few, like, you know, of like other YouTubers that are way more famous than I am. I'm not famous. <laughs> but that was a fantastic game. I loved it. It was great. Sure, I was totally trying to get with Colonel Sanders, but that's uh, just the, what gives it, like, it's just like an anime. But at the same time, it's not? I don't know what I'm trying to say here. It's a great game. I would recommend it, especially if you like KFC. Speaking of KFC, my chicken has gone cold. I will be eating that regardless, though, because KFC is great. Thanks, KFC, for the game. It's freaking fantastic. It's just like Colonel Sanders. Yeah. I mean, I mean look. They even, they even made him handsome in his whole anime form. I mean, he's even got the little, little bow tie thing, whatever that is. So anyway, I know this is like super long. I've been recording for like an hour and 52 minutes now. But I could just, you know, get it in all one video. So, whatever. Uh... <clears throat> Thanks, everybody, so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, you could always subscribe. Tell me what you thought down in the comments, whatever. Uh, once again, I am Peachy117, and I will see you next time.